famous chair the chat of all chats i thought i would come on and just simply sit down with you and talk because i know you guys are absolutely loving just me sitting here talking to you and just being authentic my real authentic self so i've been in this chair before and you've seen this scenery before so just wanted to come up here and be with my own thoughts and just really have a discussion with you about a few things and um the discussion i was thinking about the funniest things people have said to me because i'm blind and oh my goodness there are just so, there are so many but i'm not going to be able to get through all of them because there are just just loads but i just like yes who can i talk to but you lovely lot because you seem to find these videos hilarious especially the ones where the most embarrassing things I've done as a blind person, what the funniest things people have said to me um, because I'm blind. And it's not to take the mickey out of me at all. It's, it's just the funniest and the most hilarious stuff that people come out with that they don't even think about. Um, okay, so in no particular order, I'm just going to just talk about the ones that kind of come to the top of my head. So the first one is... Wow, I didn't know guide dogs do makeup so well. What? Really? Guide dogs, I mean, they are the most amazing, intelligent, incredible creatures. But their intelligence and their ability doesn't stretch that far. I mean, today I haven't got loads of makeup on. I like the kind of natural look. Um, depends on where I'm going. Um, yesterday, talking about makeup yesterday in my video it was the first day during lockdown i had actually put a full face of makeup on which i was so impressed with myself because i'm thinking oh my goodness i'm probably going to forget <laughs> i forget everything that i've ever learned i'm no makeup expert at all so yeah don't come for me put them in the comments below um if you are interested in me doing a video talking about makeup and how i apply i did do a very brief one several months ago actually talking about how I apply makeup but I'm really hoping to do a video um, showing how I apply it and how I get my mama bear to come uh, and tell me what it looks like over FaceTime because I'm here on my own I don't have anyone who can tell me if my makeup looks good or not and it just gives me that reassurance and confidence but I digress um, put it in the comments below if you would like to see me do a video on that. I have it in the pipeline to do, but let me know if you would like to see that, how I just apply a natural look, day-to-day -day look, not a going out glamorous look. I need to get a little bit more better at applying makeup than that. I'm getting there, guys. Come on, give me some slack. <laughs> but going back to people's comments, people asking my guide dog how he applies makeup for me. And I have a laugh with it, guys. I have a laugh because I just think you've got to have a sense of humour. You've got to be able to laugh at yourself in any situation. It just makes things a lot easier. That's how I deal with it. Everyone's going to be different. I don't feel awkward at all about people asking because I think that's how people learn. That's how people get educated. But it is the most funny, funniest thing ever to, to hear people ask. I'm amazed how your guy does your makeup. Now, that, that's been probably about three or four times since having a guide dog. And I trained with my first guide dog back in 2003. Eek! Shows my age, 17 years ago. Um, but it hasn't been too many times. But there have been those times where I just cannot stop myself from having a straight face to grinning like a Cheshire cat. Um, because people really do have this impression, well, those people did, I must say, have that sort of impression <laughs> that guide dogs can do your makeup. I wish he could. That would be amazing. What a talent he would have, Marty. Um, so that's one funniest thing. Now, many years ago, when I was looking for employment, and to be honest, employment as a disabled person is really hard. Um, and I'm kind of shouting out to, to all of my my friends in the blind community and the disability community, getting a job can be really challenging um, for many different reasons. And again, I probably will do a video on this uh, because it's a topic that 
gets spoken about a bit, but coming from the perspective of someone who has been there searching for a job, applying for multiple jobs, putting in applications, writing your CV, tweaking that, and it can be so destroying, but I digress. I will do a video on that. Link it in the comments below. Put it in the comments below if you want me to, to ramble about my experience of looking for paid employment here in the UK. It's about 75% roughly, give or take, don't come for me on that, guys, um, of people of working age who are unemployed, um, who are disabled. And I think that's absolutely staggering. But anyway, I, I will do a video if you would like. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts, how you found getting employment or are you searching for employment as a disabled person? Again, link it, put it in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to hear from you um, and maybe we can share some ideas and tips. But anyway, okay, <laughs> so here I was, living in Great Yarmouth at the time. Always these fun things happen in Great Yarmouth because it's the place to be, you've got to go. If you've never been, go to Great Yarmouth. Um, go to Goulston. It's it's a great seaside place. Um, very busy in the summer. So if you don't like busyness, don't go in the summertime. Um, <laughs> okay, so there I was going to the job centre. And I'm not ashamed of saying that I, I was unemployed because we all go through stages of being unemployed, even if we're going from job to job, even if we're volunteering, you know, and we haven't got a job. We're doing something for the community. So it's it's not you know, it's not a thing to not talk about. Um, so I went to the job centre and in I went. I toodled in with my guide dog. It wasn't Marty. It was Mac, actually. And I sit down and they were going through the jobs that I could do. And me being me, I'm quite open. I, I said, look, I will give more or less anything a go within my limitations, within my ability because I, th I think it's important to be open-minded. Oh, serious guys. Okay, I, I am being serious now. So, here we go. The list of jobs they think I can do. Have you got a driver's license? I kind of look down towards my guide dog saying, um, he hasn't quite passed his driving lesson yet. Um, and I think they kind of got the hint. So then they were talking about working in a restaurant. Now, it depends on how much sight you have, what your vision is like, whether you know you find those sorts of things difficult. For me, as someone who has got no sight at all, I would struggle. In actual fact, it would be an impossibility to, to go around um, and take people's orders, or even if someone's, you know, got their arm in the air trying to attract the attention of the blind waiter waitress come on seriously you'd be waiting all day and night for me to come because i wouldn't know that you've got your arm in the air waiting for me to come and give you some attention so that was on the list and i said that you know i i could i could try and answer the phones but then it's accessing the systems or like accessible. Anyway, so we were going through a whole list of things that I just simply couldn't do. And he said, well, what can you do? And I said, everything other than the list you've just said, I, I can work uh, with computers if the systems are gonna be accessible, if I can have speech software, which I use JAWS for Windows, and I can use other methods of being able to get the support. I can use access to work, which is the government scheme over here, assisting people in employment and those people who have got employment to make sure that they are going to be assisted and supported within their role. So I reeled off a loads of things that I could do, but it just goes to show how far we need to kind of go to educate people within those settings who are supposedly trying to get us into employment. And those things are and can be really difficult. But that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life is, have you got a driver's license? Come on. I know I did an April Fool's Day once where I went into the post office and said, could someone assist me in filling out my provisional driving license? <laughs> um, but that's just me, I'm silly. 
but these guys, when you're looking at job centres, you know, they really should have an understanding of um, levels of disability and what people can do. And it's good to ask. I mean, I don't mind people asking. I think it's really important. If people want to know, then just ask. Because otherwise they're not going to know and they can best assist you. But yeah, have you got a driver's licence? Mm -hmm. Nope. Sorry. And uh, the funniest things, honestly, people do come out with. Okay, one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you on because this video is going to get really long. But I will do um, another video on this. And yeah, guys, this is kind of authentic. No audio kit on my iPhone, on a tripod, pod a tripod what on earth am i doing what am i thinking on a tripod look i haven't had much sleep that's my excuse i've had probably an hour because i've been too you know focused on looking at traveling and uh what i want to do once lockdown is finished and where i want to save my money and go and travel so i apologize if my head and words aren't coming out but it's on my tripod so i do i do hope that it's kind of in focus a bit um it did say my face was center but then I have been moving around a bit because I like to kind of talk with my hands I'm very hand vocal um so the last thing I said that I would talk about to you guys yeah is okay wait for it I'm leaving you hanging in suspense how do blind people have sex? What do you need to ask that, guys? Okay, so I said that I'm more or less happy to answer any questions that you've got. I'm an open book, but when I'm going into a store and having my makeup professionally done by someone who does not know me at all, um, chatting away, and then this subject comes up with, how do you have sex? What do you mean, how do I have sex? How do you have sex? Seriously, people are probably sitting here going, cringing, like, why is she talking about sex? I'm just going to be open and honest, guys, because why not? This is a channel where you can come, learn, educate, be amused, be annoyed, whatever you want. These are my opinions. <laughs> These are my thoughts. This is my life, guys. And, yeah... I'm still sitting here kind of like, I just said that. I'm now going to go and publish this and the whole world is going to see this. But it's a question that has been asked numerous times by many different people. How do you have sex? Now, guys, I don't want to know your intimate business. I don't want to know what you do. But do you need to have a light on when you have intimate lovemaking with your partner, your husband, your wife. Isn't it about touch? Isn't it about how the other person feels and the emotions? You don't need to be looking at your partner, do you? I mean, isn't it about just being close and together and finding out ways? <laughs> so I have sex how you have sex, regardless whether light on or off. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it on that note. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. You can, of course, subscribe. You will be supporting my channel and I will be making more content like this. And put it in the comments below what you want to see. I keep asking you guys because you guys are the ones who are here watching me and I want you to have a great learning experience. I want you to have a great and positive day. Come into my channel. So on that note, I'm going to toodle off out of here. I'm going to press my button and catch you later. Take care. Have a good day and stay safe.